Baptism is the apex predator of theology. <laughs> this stop and go theology. Hey, YouTube theologians. Boy, last week I posted a video about baptism and the efficacy of baptism, the difference between Baptists and Lutherans, and the internet went nuts. I realized, boy, the World Wide Web needs to learn about baptism. But more on that later. But there's a reason why. It's interesting that there's people who, who are, com and you should go and check out the comments and go and engage in a friendly and loving manner. But there's people who deny the Trinity, the Oneness Pentecostals, the some sort of Aryan kind of guys are on there. I think there's a Jewish guy arguing against it. Catholics and Baptists and Pentecostals, they're all arguing about the doctrine of baptism. And there's a reason. There's a reason why the, the, to talk about baptism is to start an argument amongst amongst theologians or Christians. If you're just walking to a group of Christians, you want to have a fight, theological fight, you just mention baptism or the Lord's Supper. And the reason why is that baptism is like the apex predator of theology. And here's what I mean. I remember one time I was watching like a PBS special, probably Shark Week or something. And they said that if you get contaminants in the ocean, like mercury in the water, that it, you know, you get trace elements in like the algae and then a little bit more in whatever's next, like the plankton and then a little bit more in the shrimp. And then as you go up the food chain, the, the contaminants get more and more concentrated. Like if there's a little bit of mercury, you might be able to find it in the lower ones, but the higher you get on the food chain, like the medium-sized fish, you can start to measure it. And then the, in, in the tunas, you gotta watch out. It might not be safe to eat. And then when you get to the sharks, it can be even poisonous. So that any slight problem in the environment, any slight contamination in the environment shows up amplified in the apex predator. And baptism and the Lord's Supper are like that. If there's any sort of skewed doctrine or confusion anywhere else in your whole theological system, it shows up when it comes to baptism. So if, for example, you have a bad doctrine of the Trinity, or a bad doctrine of the church, or a bad doctrine of conversion, of the role of the will in repentance. If you have a bad doctrine of the efficacy of the Lord's word, or of the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant, or the doctrine of repentance, or the office of the ministry, any of those uh, false doctrines will show up later. If you have a bad doctrine of original sin, or if you have a bad doctrine of, um, of the age of accountability, that's an original sin connection, or even if you have a sort of kind of a creeping little Gnosticism that wants to say that spiritual things, gospel things happen on the inside and everything on the outside is a work, then, then you, that, those errors, those little things show up when it comes to baptism. And the same thing is true in the Lord's Supper. If, you, if you're wrong-headed about the two natures of Christ, it joined in the single person or the the truth of the scriptures, or again, the difference between the old covenant or the, or the new covenant, or the doctrine of sanctification, or any sort of Gnosticism, the doctrine of the church and the ministry, and, and the doctrine of worship, any of those errors will show up when it comes to the theology and practice of the Lord's Supper. So that all of these doctrines are contained there. Uh, now that's, it's, it's wonderful then to realize that you, you talk about baptism and you got to have it all straight to get it right. You got to have your doctrine of the Trinity right. You got to have your doctrine of the two natures right. You got to have your doctrine of conversion right. The efficacy of the word. All these things have to be right or else the, the baptism doctrine is wrong. And that's why, that's why you can start a fight. It's also why there's a particular genius in the old Lutherans who were asked the question, how much do we have to agree on to be united in doctrine? And they said, it's enough that we agree on the doctrine, on the, uh, excuse me, on the, on the gospel rightly preached and the sacraments rightly administered. If you have those two straight, you have it all straight because to have those two straight, you got to have it all straight. You got to have all the doctrine right. So that's fantastic. Now, what is the biblical doctrine of baptism? I will talk more about this sometime, but I'm not going to, I don't want to tell you today. I want to, uh, this is what I want you to do. I want you, and this is good practice for you YouTube theologians, to, to, you got to see this stuff for yourself. So I want you to go and just get your concordance out or get online and get, open up a biblical concordance and just type in the word baptism and read for yourself every Bible passage about baptism. That's just the easiest way to do it. And say, okay, I'm going to get my doctrine of baptism from the Bible passages about baptism. 
You can ask yourself, and there's a couple of passages that don't use the word baptism that you'll want to throw in there. John 3, 5, born of water and the Spirit. Titus 3, 5, the washing of regeneration. Also, Ephesians 5, like around verses 20 to 25, where it says that Christ cleansed the church with a washing of the water and the Word. So toss those in there as well. Ask yourself some questions. Does baptism have something to do with salvation? Does baptism have something to do with the forgiveness of sins? Is baptism actually accomplishing something or is it simply a, a sign? Is baptism my work or God's work? Is it, is it something that I'm doing or is it something that God is doing for me? Just, just answer those questions from the texts that are there in the scripture and let that shape your theology of baptism. Uh, this is really, I think it's really great. Now, one of the dangers is because baptism and the Lord's Supper are places where the church disagrees, and we understand why. I mean, the apex theology, uh, that is one reason why everyone disagrees about baptism. Uh, the, that the fact that the Lord wants to give us all these gifts in baptism, so the devil would obviously be attacking uh, uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper because he doesn't want us to have these gifts that the Lord wants to give. And then there's this other temptation that because we can't agree on it, we say, well, maybe it's not essential or maybe it's all opinions. But that simply cannot be maintained when we look at what the Bible says. I mean, baptism and the Lord's Supper are obviously important to Jesus. He's given out the Lord's Supper on the night when he was betrayed. He's given us baptism, but right before the ascension, saying, make disciples this way. And everybody who who's becomes a Christian in the book of Acts is almost immediately baptized. It's, it's just there. So we don't want to diminish these doctrines because we can't come to an agreement on them. And, and nor do we want to despair that we can't come to an agreement. Just because the church is divided does not mean that it will always be divided. And I'm convinced that the passages of Scripture that Jesus has spoken or that the Holy Spirit has inspired to be given to us by the prophets and the apostles are clear enough to establish our doctrine so that we can have confidence that what we believe about baptism is what Jesus wants us to believe about baptism. And that the gifts we confess we receive in baptism are the gifts that Jesus wants to give in baptism. So thanks for engaging. I hope this is helpful. Uh, carry on in the conversation. I love it. I love it. Uh, be kind to each other, uh, but be clear and use the Bible uh, when you're arguing about theology. And we'll talk to you soon. God's peace be with you.